Hi everyone, this is DeFi Dad. Today I'm gonna to walk you through a tutorial of hopefully everything you need to know to prepare for Pack Drop 2 with Parallel. Now, some of you already know Parallel. It's a sci-fi trading card game that uses NFTs. Some of you are gonna to be totally new to this, and so I'm hoping to sort of walk you through all of the context of what's been built over the last six months and what you essentially need to know if you were to want to participate in the game in the future or start collecting uh, cards through these pack drops or even through the OpenSea secondary market. So whether you're newer to trading card games like myself or whether you've played them in the past, you know, like Magic or Pokemon, this is a very unique franchise. At the moment, the game is actually being developed, and so this is a card game that really is for collectors at this point. Uh, we don't know all of the in-game mechanics, but there's some bits of information I'm gonna share and also point you to some incredibly helpful resources that I've found over the last few months. Parallel is a sci-fi trading card game today. However, there's a lot of speculation that this will power uh, games in VR, AR, and then of course uh, there's a, a potential for uh, movies, you know, TV shows in the future. I'm not going to read you all of the text here on screen, but I would recommend you go to parallel.life slash story, and that'll tell you uh, the background to uh, where the parallel story begins, which really is supposedly based on some cataclysmic event on Earth. And then that leads to different factions of human beings living in different parts of uh, the universe. So the parallel lore is made up of five different parallels. So these are five distinct civilizations you can see with their own strengths, strategies, and abilities. Um, and those are referred to as Earthen, Marcolian, Ogenkor, Cathari, and the Shroud. And I can attest as someone who is totally new to this game a few months ago, uh, as you start to explore these cards, you can see a distinct difference uh, in those strengths and abilities and basically what their civilizations are supposed to focus on. Because at the end of the day, these cards are meant to tell a story. Uh, for now, that story helps us to play a future trading card game. But again, my speculation is that this is going to lead to uh, maybe like a whole nether sort of Marvel-like universe or a Star Wars-like universe. Aside from the Parallel website, I'll link in the YouTube video description uh, this article by Yunt Capital, which is a backer of the, the core team at Parallel. Uh, this is a great article back from July 2021 that sort of walks through uh, more of the details that are uh, covered actually on the Parallel website. So if you're looking for a, a more TLDR uh, description on these different parallels, this is a great post. So once you understand the background to these different parallels, you can start to dig into the cards and you'll find these at parallel.life slash cards. These cards will have different strengths and abilities, but for right now, I just look at them based on whether I like the art and then what is the rarity of those cards? Are they playable or not? 
So there are some cards that are not playable, but they are um, collectibles, or they could entitle you in the future to maybe some share of royalties or a future token airdrop or voting rights uh, within the community. So there's all sorts of possibilities. But for me, it's just, do I like the art? Do I think this is a card within a parallel that I would want to own? And then how rare is that card? In the Parallel Discord under card FAQs, there's this uh, great color guide that was created by one of the uh, uh, top moderators, Dior. So it basically shows you these colors that refer to how rare or how many editions there are of each card. So you can see there's common and blue up top. Uh, more rare than that is uncommon, then rare, then legendary, then prime, and so on. When you look at the cards, the color should range from this common all the way down to prime. Uh, and prime would mean, again, the least number of copies of that card. However, there's also what we refer to as special edition. This is kind of like a foil card, but since these are NFTs, uh, digitally we use uh, this sort of like color coding to denote that. Uh, there's also animated cards, which are called perfect loops. And a perfect loop sounds just like what it is. Uh, it's an animation and you can watch it and it just continues to loop. However, there's very few of these. So you notice that uh, there are 500 of this perfect loop of the Cathari Eye of Gali. And then if you check out, there's only seven of them that are currently uh, owned. Actually, I guess six and because the rest of them are owned by uh, Parallel. So this starts to give you a sense of like why some of these cards are going for a lot of money on the secondary market. However, uh, it's worth reminding you that someone randomly pulled this card out of a deck. So they probably bought uh, a card drop and then were able to get this card for, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ETH. Lastly, we have assets. So there's only three of these as far as I know. Uh, there's a galaxy key, a prime key, and a catalyst drive. Uh, catalyst drives and prime keys will actually show up in card drops. So there is a chance that someone will pay you know, 0.1 ETH, 0.2 ETH, uh, and they will be able to pull uh, either a prime key or a catalyst drive. However, the galaxy key was... Uh, many, many months ago, I believe sometime in the summer of 2021, uh, this was awarded to a number of uh, early adopters. And then the prime key also was originally uh, a reward to other early adopters. Uh, worth noting, if I move my little video here, uh, Catalyst Drives, there are only 150 of these. They go for a lot of money. Uh, so this is probably out of reach for most folks, uh, but it is possible that someone could be lucky enough to pull this in uh, pack drop two or future pack drops. Same thing can be said here about the prime key. So we covered the color coding, which again refers to the rarity of these cards. Let's just walk through a few examples of uh, cards that uh, not only have a certain rarity, but also have a special edition and might also have some distinguishing features that differentiate the cards, like whether it's a, a daytime or nighttime uh, version of the card. So here at parallel.life slash cards, um, I've searched for the pocket dimension card. Uh, there are two different versions of this card here on the right. You can see that uh, the color coding uh, tells us that it is rare. And then you can also note that there are 2,000 of this card in total. Now, because there is a daytime and nighttime version, uh, one thing to note is that means that there are, are 1,000 of the daytime card and there are 1,000 of the nighttime card. So the addition refers to all of the pocket dimensions, but 1,000 are daytime, 1,000 are nighttime. So these are cards that, again, anyone could get or have gotten in a previous pack drop and could get them in the future uh, in future pack drops. 
However, there are also special edition cards. So remember, this is kind of like getting a foil card, uh, except we're working with NFTs, and so these are all digital and digitally scarce. And so anyways, this is the way that's visualized for now. Um, you'll notice that there is a uh, edition of 500 here, so 250 of the nighttime card, 250 of the daytime card. And so there's actually less of this card or either of these cards than the original cards up above that are considered rare. The other thing you'll note here, and these are all the different like uh, ways that these cards or collectible cards are being distributed, uh, there are what we call art concept cards, or I guess concept art cards. Uh, and so this is an addition of eight. So there's only eight of these that exist. Uh, some of them have already been pulled. I'm assuming there's probably some left that could show up in this pack drop. Uh, these uh, uh, are considered prime. So that is the, the rarest form of the card. And again, if we go back to our color coding, you can see we go from the top to the bottom and prime uh, is, is what we see here. These concept art cards are definitely some of the, the most uh, <laughs> rare cards to find. Uh, many of them aren't even listed for sale on OpenSea on the secondary market. What's awesome about um, whether you have a pocket dimension that is the original rare version, the edition of 2000, or whether you have the special edition versions, these are all playable cards. The, the last card here to note is this is the masterpiece. So masterpieces are one of one. So this is a, a very rare card. Uh, these are cards that tend to range from several hundred ETH uh, upwards of, they've been priced up to about a thousand ETH. I'm not sure if anyone's actually bought it at that price yet. These cards are so valuable because uh, there's a 10% royalty when you trade one of these cards. And uh, that royalty is normally paid to the core team at Parallel. This is what's helping to bootstrap the development of the Parallel franchise. However, 1% or one tenth of that 10% royalty uh, is being paid to whoever owns this card. And since we're dealing with Ethereum wallet addresses, it's really simple because you don't have to like get in touch with someone. You can simply just pay that royalty forward to whatever uh, wallet address is holding this card. So these are very valuable. That's why they're considered prime in terms of their rarity. This is a one of one. So there's very few cards that are one of one, but for every design of a card, uh, there is a masterpiece. And so this is the masterpiece for uh, Pocket Dimension. So if you can recognize the color coding or just look at the edition size to understand the rarity of these cards, and if you can enjoy the artwork and start to consider uh, what might be interesting to collect, then it begs the question of what is a set of cards? Now in the future, uh, folks will build decks to play this card game, um, just like other trading card games. I'm not gonna go into that right now. That goes way beyond me at this point because the, um, the core team hasn't even released those details. But from a collector's standpoint or just an early adopter standpoint, uh, you can start to think of these uh, uh, sets or parasets as ways to you know, own uh, different collections of these cards. So Dior uh, from the uh, Parallel Discord was kind enough to create this uh, spreadsheet. And so I'll link this also in the YouTube video description. But uh, you'll notice there's PS15. So if we go back in time uh, in March, this is the original card drop. Uh, so for the lucky 200 plus folks who participated, um, who I believe were actually bidding individually on cards at that time. This was referred to as PS15. So these, these cards uh, are all listed here conveniently with links to uh, uh, be able to check out what they're going for, potentially buy them on the secondary market on OpenSea. And so one could begin to collect these 
and then they would own a paraset, and that paraset being PS15. Separate from that, we have the PS15 SE set. Now you notice these edition sizes are much smaller, are, are much rarer. There's you know that many less cards, and so this is clearly going to be uh, rare that someone would have a PS15 SE complete set. And so uh, if I look at the rarest card here, it looks like Cytokinesis SE is uh, only has 36. And then if you look at Cytokinesis on OpenSea, uh, it's currently listed at over 120,000 US dollars based on the price of Ether today at 28 ETH. Uh, and in terms of the owners, uh, all of them looks like have been distributed. So there are some who own multiple uh, cards, but uh, most others own a single card. This is part of the magic of using NFTs is you're able to affirm on the blockchain how many cards there are, who owns them. You can even look at the history of the card to see like who's owned it, what it's sold for. So that's PS15 SE. If we move over then to PS15 art cards, uh, these are uh, special cards that were released. Uh, around that time. So these are cards where there's only eight of them for each of these different types of cards. So here's another example, you know, of a concept art card. You can see it's going for 46 Ether, which is a lot. And so a full para set here would be all of these cards, which I would say is very unlikely because um, each one of these cards is only eight of them. So probably very unlikely that anyone has all eight of them. Um, we also have card backs, which is just another collectible. There's only a hundred of these and there's five of them in total, five different types of cards. Then we move to pack drop uh, one, which happened in August, 2021. So there's a lot more cards. I would expect that in pack drop two, we'll probably see more cards than this. I just, I think it's a matter of like the team being able to release more and more cards as they hire more and more artists and are able to um, to scale their operations. Uh, but you can see all the different types of cards here and all the different uh, edition sizes as well. Just like with PS15, there is a special edition version and there's actually more of those cards. Now, if we go to a different tool, so this is at parallel.tools, uh, this actually helps to better visualize whether or not you own a full paraset. So, Here's the Paraset checker. I punched in my wallet address. I do have all of PD1, and then it tells me how many I'm missing of each of the cards in each one of the other Parasets. So the one I'm closest to is I'm five away from having PS15, um, but some of those cards are a little too expensive for me right now. And so this is another great tool to visualize, okay, what do I own uh, among these different Parasets? So between this spreadsheet and the Parallel.Tools website, that will help to uh, understand whether you have a paraset or what you're missing to complete a paraset. Now, the good news is you don't have to own a paraset or collect all these cards to play in the future. Uh, those details will eventually be released, but this is uh, at this point a game of just collecting what you like or potentially what you might think is valuable in the future. There are going to be those who love Marcolian and are going to resonate with that uh, style of playing the game. So they're gonna build a deck that is uh, Marcolian. There's others like myself who probably are gonna try to collect cards across multiple parallels and build multiple decks. I wanna to briefly touch on uh, prime keys. So we talked earlier about assets like prime keys, galaxy keys, and catalyst drives. And uh, these are uh, limited edition assets that are clearly going for more money on the secondary market, but there's a reason for that. There's a reason that uh, the community has valued these. And so I'm gonna link this excellent article by one of the community members, uh, Zero X Cod. Uh, he covers in here a number of details around prime keys like the fact that there are uh, only 1,086 uh, in circulation, 48 of those will be distributed in this pack drop on October 30th, 
And then 367 have been held back for future pack drops and other giveaways. So these prime keys are not playable in the game, but there are other benefits that we know of, and there are future benefits that are being speculated on. So there is a coming proposal called the prime proposal. It's expected to be in the form of a white paper, and it will lay out more of the uh, tokenomic or in-game economic details uh, that we can look to understand how you would play the game, how players might be rewarded, and so on. There's also more to dig into around the future Prime token. So this is a token that uh, will be released uh, eventually. And again, whether it's a token that it's simply rewarded to tournament players or not, we're, we're not sure. Uh, but we do know that Prime key holders uh, will uh, likely receive a certain amount of Prime tokens. Again, I cannot confirm that with all certainty. Everything that I've uh, mentioned here is subject to change by the core team. But one of the reasons that Catalyst drives and Prime drives have gone up in value so much is because while there are only 1,500 Prime keys, the idea is that these will uh, be complementary to Catalyst drives, and there's only 150 of these which when you combine the two, you should in the future see something like this that is called a prime drive. And that will show that you have some sort of special activated asset uh, in the game. So we talked a lot about masterpieces, which are unique because they're one of ones and they entitle the holder of that masterpiece to uh, royalties that are being paid uh, when cards are being traded. This is potentially another form of passive income uh, when you hold a catalyst drive plus a prime key. And then lastly, the uh, major uh, benefits of a prime key at the moment are that everyone that holds a prime key uh, will receive uh, a core pack in pack drop two. So there's three types of packs we'll talk about. This is the, um, the lowest tier version of it and uh, everyone hence will have a reserved core pack. They'll still have to pay for it, but they won't have to fight others to reserve that core pack. Uh, also, those prime key holders are entitled to a hoodie, uh, uh, which I think is, is fun. Um, so that's some parallel merch for them. And then also there is uh, an exclusive party that will happen uh, in New York during NFT NYC on November 3rd. Oh, I also forgot Paradox. Uh, so there is like a, a private Discord channel for prime key holders, uh, as well as the uh, ability to vote on uh, proposals. So these are called Paradox proposals. Uh, if you go to parallel.life slash Paradox, since I own a prime key, I'm able to vote on these different proposals. One prime key equals one vote, so only a uh, 1,500 or less folks can vote. Uh, there's uh, uh, lots of important proposals in here, and I think some really clever ones like uh, hiring Morgan Freeman to read the prime paper in the future. So if you followed the video up till this point, now uh, I want to prepare you for how Pack Drop 2 will work. So I will link this article by Young Capital. I think this is another great post uh, that gives you all of the nitty gritty detail that they could share from the last pack drop and how you can participate in this next one. So there's really only three things you need to do to prepare for pack drop two. One of them is you go to parallel.life and you wanna sign up for an account. Now, if you already have an account, you can simply hit sign in. It would make sense to be signed into this account before October 30th, which is a, a Saturday if we're talking about 5 p.m. Eastern time. So that is the deadline. That's when this happens. It is very important that anyone sign up in advance uh, in order to participate in the pack drop. I would highly recommend that you not try to create multiple accounts. The team has gone to great lengths to prevent uh, bots or anyone from trying to game the system with multiple accounts. Uh, in fact, you would 
definitely be blacklisted from future pack drops if caught. So I'd um, highly recommend, uh, given the intense demand that there is out there to participate in the pack drop, just focus on having one account and uh, you can sign up here at parallel.life slash sign up. Uh, once you've signed up, you can add a profile picture, username, all the usual sort of stuff. Uh, but this is what you need to be able to actually uh, reserve a card pack. Second, you're going to need a MetaMask wallet. So MetaMask is a crypto wallet that is an extension on your browser. Uh, normally, it's used on Chrome or Firefox. This is something you can go to metamask.io. Be very careful that you type that in carefully. It's M-E-T-A-M-A-S-K dot I-O. There's a lot of um, uh, scammers out there that try to create alternative websites to trick you into uh, creating a, a false account. So make sure you're careful about that. And then you want to download the wallet. I will link a video that I did previously on how to set up a MetaMask account as well as how to actually fund the account with Ether. Once you set up MetaMask, it's just gonna sit on your browser. So I'm in a Chrome browser and you can see that I have some Ether here. And that is Ether that I could have bought and sent from a uh, crypto exchange like Coinbase, or I can actually just go here on MetaMask and I can buy using my credit card uh, or debit card using one of these options. So these are the steps that should be taken in advance, but uh, it is not necessary to have MetaMask set up uh, to participate in reserving a uh, pack drop on October 30th. So the third and final step to preparing for the pack drop is just be sure to follow uh, Parallel NFT on Twitter. Uh, they are expected to post the link to uh, the uh pack drop to reservation page at 5 p.m. Eastern on October 30th. I would highly suggest getting here sooner and waiting. Uh, also, you can hop into their Discord here. So this link um, will allow you into the Discord and in the general channel is where it's expected to post. If you want to dig into more of the specifics of what cards make up which packs, the Yunt, Yunt Capital article that I'm going to link kind of breaks that down for you here in terms of uh, you know how rare those cards are and how many show up per pack. Basically, what's the, the probability of those showing up here? And then uh, you can see a breakdown here of the actual inventory uh, of cards that are to be released during pack drop two, and then how many more are being held back for the next pack drop. Again, these are details that are really out of my control or anyone's control other than the core team. So I tend to not worry about this. It's just a matter of, again, how much am I willing to pay? How many packs do I want? Up to three of core, up to three of enhance, or up to three of the premium. Lastly, if you have prepared by creating a parallel account, having your MetaMask ready, Here's what you can expect to see on the day of the pack drop. So around 5 p.m., if you're following Parallel on Twitter or on their Discord, you should see the link. You would already be hopefully logged in to your Parallel account. And then when you click the link, you'll see a screen that looks something like this. This is from pack drop one, so we don't know for sure that it's gonna look like this. And you notice I can reserve individually up to three core packs, up to three enhanced packs, or up to three uh, premium packs. But what I'm gonna do, and this is for anyone that um, is able to you know, pay the cost of all of these different packs, you can just hit set max reserve amount, follow the prompts. It should shortly after that uh, confirm that you have reserved your cards. Once you've done that, you're, you're essentially safe. The cards are, are yours to pay for. Now you have an expected 72 hour window. That's what the core team had um, told me today. We don't know for sure, like that could obviously change. But shortly after you get a confirmation message on screen, you should then eventually see a payment queue automate. And that payment queue will basically look to make sure that your MetaMask is connected 
you know, again, you're already logged into your parallel life account and it should also check whether or not you have enough funds in your wallet. So you need enough ether to pay for this. Plus you need some ether additionally, you know, let's say 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03 ether to pay fees, depending on how congested the network is at the time. So, um, Assuming that one has enough ether in their wallet, you should then have an option to click and confirm a MetaMask transaction. The last thing that I should see after my uh, transaction has confirmed, so if I'm following that ether scan link uh, and trying to make sure that the transaction has confirmed on Ethereum, then my cards or my packs will arrive. And so there will be a tab possibly here, but somewhere on screen, wherever you are when you're processing all of this through the Parallel website. And, and there should be a PAX tab, which if you click that PAX tab, you'll be able to watch on screen as you open up your PAX, revealing your cards. So it's probably something people will commonly record to sort of um, celebrate uh, their reaction to the different cards that they're opening. Uh, but that is as much as we know at this point, and I hope that that detail helps you to sort of walk through uh, this process in the next day or so. Whenever I pay for my cards, when I put a transaction through, it's important that within that 72-hour window, I consider the fact that the network could be more congested, congested and I want to go to etherscan.io slash gas tracker to check the prices here because when I go and click, so uh, pretend I've had the transaction prompted here, I click edit. The max priority fee, this is just if you've never used MetaMask or ever used um, Ethereum, just set it to one and a half or two at most. You don't need to set it any higher than that. The other number that matters is I want to look at what these total numbers are. You notice like on the on the range uh, at the higher end of it, so faster um, confirmations, it's 177 GUE. I want my max fee to be higher than these numbers. And so, you know, let's pretend that, uh, let's pretend that the numbers are there right now and I only have a few hours left in my 72 hour window. I wanna put in something like 200 GUE to make sure that it goes through. So be mindful of this number. This is a number that uh, if you are close to the 72 hour deadline running out, I, I would be mindful to put this number up higher than these, but normally these numbers fluctuate between 60 or 70 GUE up to as high as two or 300 GUE. So this, the higher this number, the, the more likely it is my transaction confirms. So again, I might, maybe I put this down to 150. And then once I hit confirm, I can wait and watch on screen uh, for my cards to arrive or basically for my, my payment to go through. So that's everything I wanted to cover. I hope this is helpful. You know, I'll leave you with, uh, there is a great article by uh, a community member named Fitch, and I will link this also in uh, the YouTube video description. Uh, it basically talks about why Parallel is such a powerful um, new trading card game. And so some of the points I really like that he made are uh, just in general, the collectible uh, card game or trading card game industry is um, ripe for growth and having NFTs available is so powerful because now you have uh, digital trading cards that are digitally scarce that can be bought and sold 24 seven all throughout the world. So outside of the fact that the game itself will be a game that can be played 24 seven with hopefully a very recognizable franchise uh, with other parts of that franchise being VR, AR games, possibly future movies and so on. Um, these, these cards themselves will power what I think promises to be one of the most popular trading card games in the world. I'll leave you with uh, one more point. 
One of the things that drew me into Parallel was the community, because the community uh, is about 20,000 or more strong in Discord. So uh, you can hop into the, the Parallel Life Discord if you just go to their, their Twitter account, Parallel NFT, there's a Discord link here. So that's a really fun place to be able to, to meet and talk with others that are into Parallel. Uh, but then the second part of it is just the art. You know, like uh, when you take a look at just how cool this is. And so if you just take a look at the recently created NFTs, you really start to get a sense of like how I think special or unique this project is. Um, you can see here, this is a masterpiece. So a one of one of one called uh, EMP Shockwave. And I just think it's cool. And uh, gosh, look at this one here. A lot of these I haven't seen myself, so you're kind of seeing me look at these for the first time. It's very cool. So I'll link all of the different um, articles and help guides that uh, I referenced here. And then uh, just be sure that you uh, follow Parallel NFT on Twitter. And don't forget to uh, uh, use the link there to hop into the Discord. Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, if you would like to learn more about NFTs and DeFi in the future, you can subscribe at DeFiDad.com. I've got all sorts of playlists here to get started. And if you're building the next great DeFi, NFT, Web3, GameFi uh, protocol, please reach out to my team at fourthrevolution.capital. We'd love to partner with you in what you're building.